How many minutes, Tom? We ready? Team, are we ready? We ready? See, all right. Okay, all right. Well, good evening. Welcome to the Atlanta Public Schools Division of Academics Family and Community Cluster Training. This is our very first cluster training. We're really excited to start with the fabulous Thero Cluster. I am Yolanda Brown, the Chief Academic Officer um, and the very excited leader of the Division of Academics. And we are happy tonight to bring to you some very mm -hmm. focused trainings mm -hmm. around our academic work. And so tonight you will hear from right. many members. Well, good evening. Welcome to the Atlanta Public Schools Division of Academics, Family and Community Cluster Training. This is our if very you're first listening on YouTube, training. Please We're really mute excited that to start with the fabulous Thero Cluster. I am Yolanda Brown, the Chief Academic Officer um, and the very excited leader of the Division of Academics. And we are happy tonight to bring Again, we are happy tonight to bring to you some the focus of our academic work in Atlanta Public Schools. And so tonight you will hear from members of the Division of Academics team. And so we're excited that you're here. And so with that, I will turn it over to um, starting with um, my the meeting norms and I'll turn it over to the Division of Academics team. Again, welcome and thank you for being here. Good evening, my name is Selena Florence and I am the Assistant Superintendent for Teaching and Learning. Our norms for this evening are to be polite and respectful to others, make sure your microphone is muted at all times, feel free to ask questions in the chat and we will be responsive to those, stay focused on the topics at hand, and be patient, assume everyone is doing their best. So as Ms. Brown just said, this is our first effort as far as our cluster meetings go. So please be patient with us. If we have technical difficulties or if something is not going right, please be patient. We promise to get it right and get it fixed as soon as possible. So next is our agenda. You have just heard our welcome from Ms. Brown, our Chief Academic Officer. We'll do some introductions next. You will hear about our K through 12 Universal Screeners 
NWEA MAP and the BASC 3 BIS. We'll talk about intervention and enrichment. The Securely platform will take some questions and answers, and then we will ask for you to give us some feedback. So on this slide, you see the organizational chart for the Division of Academics. At the top, you see Ms. Brown, who you just heard from. You see Tom Munn, who is our program director, our two administrative assistants. And at the bottom, you see the three departments that represent the Division of Academics. Again, I'm Selena Florence, Assistant Superintendent of Teaching and Learning. I'll turn it over to Dr. Katika Lovett at this time to introduce herself. All right, good evening. I'm Katika Lovett, Assistant Superintendent for the Office of Student Services. And good afternoon, good evening. I am Dr. Aliyah Henderson Rosser. I'm the Assistant Superintendent of Instructional Technology. Welcome. On the next slide, you see our three different departments. We wanted to make sure you understand what, we, what is represented by teaching and learning, student services, and instructional technology. So in the first column, you see the teaching and learning department. That is made up of curriculum and instruction, ESOL, DLI, and world languages, early learning, CTAE and Signature Programming, SEL, Social Emotional Learning, and JROTC. In the middle, you see Student Services. That department is made up of Health Services, Student Supports and Interventions, Special Education, Summer and After School Programs. And finally, you see the Instructional Technology Department, which is made up of Media Services, Instructional Development and Design, which is Professional Learning, Instructional Technology, and Virtual Programs, AVA K-12. Next, we want you to understand that all of our work is grounded in our district strategic plan. It is what drives what we do every single day. It outlines the specific goals, uh, the specific action steps and strategies that we will use to make sure that all students in APS are learning and receive a high quality education. The strategic, strategic plan really is our roadmap and it really is what we use to guide our work every single day. We also have four strategic priorities that we use to guide our work, fostering academic excellence for all, building a culture of student support, equipping and empowering leaders and staff, and creating a system of supports for all schools. And we use all those priorities through the lens of equity, excellence, and engagement. This year, something that's new for us is our APS-5. So the APS-5 is really the, the key components that we are using as a district to guide our academic focus. So the first one is data, and it says that we will use data to, to drive all of our instructional decisions and to make sure that we have equitable outcomes for all of our students. Next is curriculum and instruction. We will implement rigorous and culturally relevant and linguistically responsive curriculum with fidelity in all core content areas and instructional best practices in tier one instruction. Third is whole child intervention. We will implement a whole child system of supports that integrates social emotional learning, behavior, wellness, and comprehensive academic intervention plans. Fourth is personalized learning. We will utilize flexible learning tools, technology integration, and targeted instruction to personalize learning for all students. And finally, you see signature programming. We will strengthen the implementation of signature programming across all schools. So as I said earlier, this is our first engagement with US parents. We're starting today with our whole child intervention piece. So as we continue to engage with you, you'll hear more about our APS-5 and how we use that to guide our work. So, now we are prepared to start our section of the training that is on NWEA MAP. You may have heard of MAP. Your child may have come home and talked about MAP or you may have heard from your child's teacher about MAP. This slide, we're gonna tell you a little bit about, about the purpose and value of the MAP growth assessments. So first of all, MAP is a computer adaptive assessment for math and reading. And by computer adaptive, it just means that the questions get harder or easier depending on how your child responds. MAP is also a part of our APS academic recovery plan that we're using over the course of the next three years. It serves as the first time that our district has had a K through 12 universal screener for all students in APS. This is the first time we've had that. It is connected to our strategic plan, which I just talked about. It helps us at the district level and at school specifically to identify student learning needs at the school level. It helps us to set and monitor school and student goals so we can stay on track with how students are performing. It also helps teachers by guiding instruction and telling them what to do next as far as instruction goes, and also with intervention. MAP lets us know how much students learn and grow throughout the year. 
Here is the MAP assessment suite. So there are two components to MAP. We have MAP reading fluency and we have MAP growth. MAP reading fluency is for our pre-K through second grade students. Some third graders may take it depending on how they score. So MAP reading fluency is really used to help us to measure oral reading fluency and foundational skills for our early learners. It is a quick 20 minute assessment and it helps teachers to know what students are ready to learn and enables them to group students based on their particular needs. MAP fluency is available in both English and in Spanish. MAP growth is a test given to all K through 12 students in both math and literacy. It is telling us how much students have grown over the course of the year from beginning to end. Um, and it also helps teachers to plan instruction and group students based on their specific needs. It is also available in both English and Spanish. So we have those two suites of assessments that we are using throughout the course of this year. So a little bit more about MAP growth. That adaptive piece, as I said earlier, it gets easier or harder depending on how the student answers the questions. Um, it measures what students know, and it also tells us what they are ready to learn next. It measures both growth, so how students do from one assessment to the next assessment, and also achievement over time. Students participating in our DLI program will take both the English and Spanish assessments, so they would take both. And then our Spanish speaking English learner newcomers, whose Spanish literacy is stronger than English literacy, will take the Spanish assessment. So a little more about MAP reading fluency. Remember, it's for our pre-K through second grade students. It is online, it's assessing foundational and oral reading skills for our beginning readers through independent readers. It measures comprehension of material read aloud. So we know that kindergartners may not be reading yet. So it's reading material to them as they are, as it is assessing what they know and are able to do. Um, it also has a speech recognition piece. So students can speak into the microphone and it hears how they are responding and it can score them that way. So here's an example of our family report. So we are finishing up MAP testing on Monday, September 20th. That is our last day for MAP testing. So you will receive a family report for your child that details how they performed on the MAP assessment. The MAP family report, here's an example. It gives you results, key results for the test term given. So it'll be the fall this time that you will see results for. It tells you a summary of the subjects that were tested. So on this example, you see math and reading were tested. That's what we test. Um, it's organized by term. It also shows you the data pieces for how your child performed. So you can see the, um, the on the left-hand side, you see the chart that's so, showing you how the student is performing. And then on the right-hand side, you see the number that shows you where that student scored um, as far as low average to high average. It also gives you an idea of how your students are performing um, or how they will perform on state assessments, on SAT and ACT. It gives you as a parent strengths and weaknesses. So you know how your child is performing in both reading and math. And it also gives you specific areas to work, to work on at home. So it lets you know next steps for you as you read the report and how you can work with your child at home. You will also receive a MAP family guide the first time you receive your MAP report. The family guide gives you a little bit more information about how MAP works. So in the middle of the screen, it tells you a little bit about how MAP growth is, is, um, is obtained and it gives you information about how um, the adaptive testing works. You also get information about what MAP really measures. So you understand what that RIT score means. That's the, that's the phrase that you will see for your child as a RIT score. On the second page, you see a little bit more about the RIT score and then it has some common questions for you that you may have as you read your child's report. This family guide is available in 12 different languages. So you can get it in the language that, is, that best meets your needs and you can use the family guide to help you understand your child's family report. It also has a, a website at the bottom that you can use to get more information if you have more questions about your MAP family report or what the MAP data means when you look at your child's family report. You can expect to receive those by September 24th. That is the date that we've asked all schools to send the MAP family guides and the MAP family reports home by next Friday, September 24th. At this time, we will stop for questions. So please let me know if there are questions in the chat or if you want to put a question in the chat right now, we can respond to those as well.
Are there any questions on YouTube? Yes, there is one question on our YouTube. The question okay. is, does this apply to our high school students? Yes. So as I said earlier, this map assessment is being given K through 12. So every single student in APS will receive, has taken the MAP assessment or will take it in the next few days. And every single child will get a family report that comes home to tell you how your child is doing. So it applies, yes, it does apply to all of our pre-K actually, because they take MAP fluency, reading fluency, pre-K through 12th grade students have taken the MAP and should receive a MAP family report. That's a very good question. And Selena could also remind parents that we also, that they also will get that report three different times a year That's during right. the school year. So you will take the map, the map, students will take the map assessment in the fall, in the winter, and in the spring. And so every time we take the assessment, we want to send those results home to you so you can see how your child is growing and progressing throughout the school year. We have a second question from YouTube. Will the report be sent home or will it be emailed? So the report will be sent home. Um, and I'm sure some schools may do both, but we have asked them to physically send it home. Um, so you may want to uh, look for that in your child's backpack or their weekly folder they bring home if they're at elementary school, um, but it should come home as a hard copy and some schools may email it as well. All right, any other questions for me? All right, if not, I will turn it over to Dr. Lovett. Okay, and thank you, Dr. Florence. I am excited to keep the conversation going with the next version of our universal screener. And this is a universal screener for our behavioral and emotional well-being of our students. It is simply called the BAS-3 Behavioral and Emotional Screening System, or the BESS. We have with us this evening, Dr. Shannon Hervey, who serves as our Director for Student Intervention and Support. And Dr. Hervey is gonna walk us through a little more about the BAS-3 and the BESS. So at this time, I will turn it over to Dr. Hervey to get us started. Thank you and good afternoon. As part of the Whole Child Framework, you may recall that the district secured its first ever universal social emotional behavior screener, uh, which as Dr. Lovett just mentioned, is the BAS-3 BIS. The BEST screens for a variety of behavior and emotional disorders that could lead to adjustment problems. The screener is a quick and efficient way to screen students ages 3 to 18 for behavior and emotional risk. Okay, next slide. All right, so you may be asking why screen for social, emotional, and behavioral health? In addition to learning more about the risk all students may be subject to, the beauty of this screener is that it will help to put students on the radar of schools who otherwise may not be there, including those students who won't advocate for themselves and students whose academic and behavior successes actually mask their social, emotional, and inner struggles. The data from this screener will create an evidence-based pathway for students to receive additional supports, provide information that will help schools to focus effort, time, and resources on students who have the highest needs and will also aid schools in making big picture programming decisions in support of students. The screener will be administered twice per school year, once in the fall and that window open today, and then once in the spring. The fall administration window goes from September the 16th and will close October the 1st. The spring administration window opens February the 15th and closes March the 1st. Screening will be completed during a student's homeroom period, advisement period, or in the event a school has neither a homeroom or advisement period, it will be administered during the period designated at the school level. While students can access the BAS-3 Best Student Self-Assessment via My Backpack, parents are also invited to submit screener information for their students. Parents can access the parent form of the BAS-3 BEST, and you can find that link on the APS website. Parents will receive score reports following each administration window, and parent reports will also be available in Spanish. 
The World Languages Department has worked collaboratively with student support and intervention to ensure that the needs of English learners and their families are addressed throughout the screening process. Digital access of the screener is available in English and Spanish. Pen and paper administration is available in multiple languages, including English, Spanish, Arabic, Chinese, and French. Parents who have a native language other than English or Spanish can obtain a translated copy, paper copy, of the best three best from their student school. Parents and students must utilize the student's ID number to gain access to the parent and student form of the best. One-to-one -one or group administration opportunities are available for students who need support to complete the screener. And parents and teachers may be asked to complete the screener on behalf of students who have mild intellectual disabilities that may impede their ability to complete the student form. Next slide. Any parent of a student ages eight to 18 who does not wish for their child to participate in the student self-assessment of the BAS 3 BIS should return the opt-out form to their child's school. Please contact your child's school if you did not receive an opt-out form. Parents who opt out during the fall administration do not need to opt out again during the spring administration. You only have to opt out once for the entire school year. The BAS 3 BIS will analyze a student's behavior from three different perspectives, that being teacher, parent, and self-report. Students, again, ages 8, eight to 18, will complete the self-assessment. However, screener information for students younger than age 8 will be provided by teachers and parents. Teachers will provide screener information for students in grades kindergarten through 12th grade. Parents are invited to also provide screen, pre, uh, screener information for students in grades PK through the 12th grade. Next slide. Okay, the screener will produce student data that is measured in risk. Teacher and parent forms will reveal whether a student is at risk for externalizing behaviors such as hyperactivity or aggression, internalizing behaviors such as anxiety or depression, or adaptive skills deficits, or problems with communication or social skills. Student forms will reveal whether a student is at risk for internalizing behaviors, self-regulation deficits such as hyperactivity or attention problems, or personal adjustment deficits such as relationship problems and self-esteem or self-reliance issues. Students are given an overall score, which is the BERIT score. And that indicates how far their score is from the average of the norm group. The color coding gives you a glance at how risk is measured as normal, elevated, or extremely elevated. Take a moment to take note of the screener indexes and their explanations here. And these acronyms you're gonna see on the next slide in the score report. Okay, next slide. Parents can expect student reports to be sent home by October the 15th. So take a look here at an example of what a screener report could tell you for each student. I'm gonna pause here just for a couple of seconds to let you view this report. So here you see the screener for student A, which was completed by the teacher. If you look in the column that says assessment results, you see the BERI or the Behavioral and Emotional Risk Index, which indicates the student has scored as extremely elevated in risk. Also note that the internal risk is slightly more of a concern than the external risk. In the next arrow, you see the validity indicators. And the validity indicators provide an explanation of the extent to which this particular score report may be considered valid and that you can trust the outcome of this report. 
Validity index indicators will show as green for acceptable, yellow for caution, or red for extreme caution. The F index will let you know how harsh or overly negative the rater was in their responses. The consistency index will let you know if there were different responses provided to questions that are similar. And the pattern index lets you know if a pattern was detected that may indicate that the rater selected answers randomly or in a pattern. Here you see that the consistency index is caution, which means that there was a question of how consistent the rater was in responding to questions that were asking similar content. Now let's take an opportunity to review some of the teacher responses as indicated by the third red arrow. The teacher has noted the following areas of strength in this student. And that's noted by the almost always column associated with positive behaviors. This teacher has indicated that the student is well organized and does well at getting people to work together. If we look at the areas of growth, we can see that the teacher has noted the following as concerns or areas of, of growth indicated by the almost always column associated with negative behaviors. This student worries, has poor self-control, has a short attention span, is easily stressed, and appears tense. Next slide. Next slide. Okay. The screener is a starting point for next steps. After schools review data screener reports, <clears throat> excuse me, after schools review data screener reports, members of the student support team will meet with students of elevated or extremely elevated risk to confirm risk or identify need. They will then recommend a strategy of school support so, and then support the student in a manner that has been determined and worked collaboratively by the school, parent, and student. Last but certainly not least, the school will monitor progress. Next slide. There are so many different interventions that schools have access to and can employ. Here you see sample interventions that schools may recommend to support the needs of your student. Based on the needs that have been identified, schools can determine additional interventions and strategies to utilize for support. There is not a cookie cutter approach to supporting students. So the work that will go into recommending and tailoring support to fit the needs of students will be integral in helping those students to make progress, succeed and thrive. Thank you. And do we have any questions? Okay, there are no questions from our YouTube at this time, but we can pause for just a few minutes so that anyone can get their questions in at this time. Okay, all right, so thank you very much. And next, Dr. Florence will discuss intervention and enrichment. So thank you again, parents. Um, you probably heard a lot about intervention and enrichment last year, but we wanted to give you a little more information about the intervention and enrichment block, class, or course. So this year, all of our schools will be implementing an intervention or enrichment block, class, or course. Elementary schools and some of our middle schools will have the intervention or enrichment block class or course for a minimum of four days per week. They will have two days of math focus and two days of reading focus. All other middle schools and high school will have an intervention or enrichment class or course. So it's built into their school day. Data will be used to help teachers know what students need during an intervention or enrichment. So we'll use that map data that we talked about earlier to determine what happens or what's what we're focusing on, um, what is being taught during intervention or enrichment. 
Schools will also use the resources we, resources we provided for them through HMH and APEX. Those are two platforms that we provided for schools to use during intervention time. Schools can decide how enrichment looks in their buildings. We um, have provided for them Renzuli, a learning platform that is based on personalized learning. That, that platform has been provided for schools, but schools ultimately have the decision to, dec to, to decide what enrichment looks like in their buildings. So this slide may be familiar. We wanted to make sure you understood that the intervention block class or course, we are implementing that through from this year, August, 2021, all the way to May, 2024. As we said earlier, here are the time frames for the elementary schools. They will have 30 minutes of intervention or enrichment. Middle schools will have 45 minutes. High schools will have 90 minutes. Our focus is again on literacy and mathematics. And we have this comprehensive assessment piece that we talked about like our universal screener. And we'll also be progress monitoring along the way to make sure that students are progressing. So we stop periodically between the map. As I said, we do that in the fall and winter. But between that time, we are progress monitoring to make sure students are moving in the right direction. So this is how the intervention block class or course looks in all of our schools. There's basically four components. On the left-hand side, you see whole group learning. So that is the time where all students are in front of their teacher learning about the focus for today, objectives for today, and what they should be doing during that class time. Then students would transition to three different rotations. They would start with small group. So they have a time in front of their teacher with just a group of four to five students to focus on instruction that those four to five students truly need. Then students would transition to the student application piece. During this time, students would be working on a device on one of those platforms that we talked about earlier. So it could be I read, it could be 180, it could be Math 180. But at that time, they are on a personalized learning journey using their computers to work at their own pace and using um, that platform that is meeting their needs. And then the third rotation is independent reading. If it's a reading class, so students have time to just read. If it's a math class, students have time to work independently on and practice some of their math concepts. Then they might, most of the time, they're gonna transition back to the whole group learning piece so the student can wrap up the lesson. So we wanted you to understand what the workshop model looks like and how that time is structured. There's whole group time, there's small group time, there's time on the device, and there's also independent reading or independent math time. We will take questions for the intervention block at the end. If you have them, you can go ahead and add them to the chat and we will respond to those after the securely presentation. Good evening. We're going to switch gears a little bit and go into an exciting application that we have um, procured on behalf of your students to make sure that they're safe online. So we're going to talk a little bit about that um, in the Office of Instructional Technology. And I have a few questions. Have you ever wondered if your student is on task on his or her school issued laptop? Have you ever walked up on your student and then they minimize their screen and you wondered, what were you just doing? If you've asked yourself any of these types of questions, Securely is here to help you manage your students' progress and activity on the internet and ensure that they are, ish that they are using their school issued device appropriately. And so on our next slide, you'll see um, a quick QR code and link to Securely and all the things that I'm talking about today. You can type in this tiny URL to go to a web page that has everything that I will go over in the next couple of minutes. You'll have access to that. You can open up your camera app on your phone and take the QR code picture and also download um, and get the, the information from your QR code and follow along with me. And after this presentation, you'll have access um, to all of the screenshots that you'll see coming up. So let's talk about what is Securely and you know why did we feel the need to purchase this? It is a parent portal and a home app, app that parents can use to have some peace of mind on your school issued device. And you'll hear me say school issued device because this only is applicable on the device that's issued from Atlanta Public Schools. 
There are tons of different features. We'll go over a few of those today, but I wanna highlight a few that may be of interest to you as a parent. You can pause the internet um, for your student to make sure that right now we're gonna take a break from screen time. And so you, you will have the ability to pause the internet on the device. You can get pushed notifications about your student's online activity, where they're going, what they're searching for, what they're navigating to. You can receive a summary email of those activities. And you can also see within the app, real time online activity of what your student is doing at any time, anywhere. And I wonder, did you know, on our next slide, we talk about every single student in Atlanta Public Schools now has a school issued device. Our pre-K and kindergarten students have iPads and grades one through 12, they have a Chromebook. So these are the devices that we're, just, that we're talking about when we say school issued device. Right now, Securely does not work on an iPad. So your pre-K and kindergarten, you do not have this ability through Securely, but we are working on an application to make sure that those students are also protected. We have a quick video that will help you understand a few tools that will be at your fingertips. Let's take a look at the video overall to see what Securely can do. Every time a school chooses Securely, a multi-layer digital defense is put in place. That's why we're so excited your school has chosen Securely and entrusted your child's online safety to us. Whenever your student is on their school device, we're at work behind the scenes protecting them from inappropriate content or flagging activities that might point to self-harm or bullying. Think of us as your extra set of eyes, keeping kids safe in the digital world. In an effort to make your child's online experience as positive as possible, Securely makes it easier for parents to be looped in by providing you with a weekly email, including a snapshot of your child's online activity. But that's just the beginning. Once you download the Securely Home app, you'll have the ability to view a live feed of your child's online activity, including what sites they're visiting and what searches they're making. With Securely Home, you have the option to enable push notifications and receive alerts for any flagged activities, such as self-harm or bullying. But Securely's home features don't stop when your child leaves school. When school devices come home, the Securely app makes it possible for those devices to play by your rules. Choose to filter your own set of websites and categories. Even hit pause on the internet if you need to. Plus, you're able to set an automated offline schedule for the internet, perfect for dinner or bedtime. For now, be sure to keep an eye out for the email from us containing a download link to the Securely Home app, plus instructions on getting started. Thank you once again for allowing Securely to be part of keeping your child safe online. We look forward to partnering with you in this pursuit. All right, awesome. Thank you for that. So that was a quick overview of what Securely can do and the tools that you have. And so how will you access Securely at this time? To the email address that you have in Infinite Campus, every parent has an email address there that's listed and that's on file. If you've put an email address there, you already have an email with the directions on how to access and download securely. If you're unsure of how to update your email address in Infinite Campus, the next few slides will give you um, some idea of where to go to make that happen. You can also call your school's registrar or front office to help walk you through how to update your email address. If you don't have an email address on file, you will not be able to access securely from Atlanta Public Schools. You'll have to make sure that this information is correct in Infinite Campus. So on the next slide, how to update your information, you will click on the More menu in Infinite Campus. You can see that at the top right screen. It says More there. Select Family Information and click Update next to the family member whose information you actually want to update. So if it's mom, you can click there and update your email address. You can see that it looks like what it looks like here, update contact. You have the ability to also update phone numbers and to um, update your email address and put in um, a secondary email 
if you'd like to do that as well. After you've completed that field, you will click update and you're ready to receive your securely email. You can also download the securely app. Once you've downloaded that, there'll be other directions and codes in your securely email from Atlanta Public Schools that will tell you how to activate the app. But you have to have both. If you're downloading the app, you still need to access the securely email to know exactly what to do once you've got the app on your telephone. This also works on an iPad or on a computer. Now let's take a quick minute and look at once the app is downloaded, what it looks like on the home screen. You will find on the home screen an activity feed of all of your students' activities. Any rules that you have set up as a parent will be in the rules section. If there are flagged activities that you may need to be aware of, it will fall under the flagged activity menu. Any offline schedules that you set will also be listed here. You will have the ability to pause the internet on your child's device just from this screen. Now let's take a moment to go through each of these menu items. I mentioned the activity feed. What that does is provide a real time view of your child's online activities. They'll be displayed in most recent order. So if your child is, has logged on and gone to Google in the last three minutes, that's the first thing that you'll see. You can also filter and look up and search for different activities that your child has done. That happens in the filter options in the upper right hand corner. So although I'm reviewing these screenshots, you have access to a link and to this presentation where you can go back and follow this along step by step as you download the application. Also under flagged activities, this shows parents a list of all the activities that securely has actually flagged that may be potentially serious activities. So if, you're, if your student is searching for bullying and that's a search that they've been going to very frequently, it will fall up under flagged activities and it will make you aware. Under the rules section, this allows parents to set specific rules for their child's device. You can allow in certain websites and block certain websites. You can also filter out certain categories. So a very powerful place for rules, just to make sure that your student is navigating to what's appropriate um, for their age group. In our next screenshot, you'll see offline schedules. This will be one that I love. I have a 17 year old. If they could spend their life on their device, he actually would. So if I wanna pause for dinner and say, okay, between 6, 6 p.m. and 8 p.m., there'll be no online activities. I can set that schedule here under offline schedules. And then your ability to pause the internet is as simple as one click. You'll hit pause, tap the pause button. It'll bring up a small window with all of the devices that are connected and limit and pause internet connect connectivity at that time. To unpause it, you just tap again. So the interface is very fluid, it's very user friendly. Everything is really self-explanatory and it's right there on one screen for you to use. Now it could be a little overwhelming to get all of this activity at one time. If you would like to you know, opt out of receiving a summary email every week, you will have the ability to do that as well. On our next slide, you'll see again the QR code and the tiny URL. If you type in this web address, it takes you to our training webpage and you can use that to step-by-step -step go through how to download that app, how to access um, the securely email and then get going on your app and working with your student at home on their device. The next slide gives you a step-by-step, -step, so we'll pause here. If you wanna take a quick picture of this or screenshot, you can. Again, it's also on the link that I've mentioned in the previous slides. But step one is this easy, get your email from 
um, Infinite Campus. Step two, log in. All of your login information is on the student email. Get instant access at step three. Open your email and sign in. And at step five, you can start to configure your um, application and get ready to help your student find and use their devices appropriately and focus on successful academic progress. Thanks so much. And we're looking forward to working with you at your home school if you need more information and we can have someone work with you step by step to get this downloaded and get you on your way using securely. Thanks again for your time and attention. All right, at this time, we will take any questions. Um, I see one in our Zoom chat that says, does the score affect the child's grades on their report card? And I'm assuming the parent is asking about the MAP score, either MAP or BASC. Neither of those assessments affect your child's report card grade. Um, they are strictly for us to use to determine how to best instruct your child, how to best teach them while they're in the classroom, but neither of those scores will go on a report card for your child. Do we see any other questions in the YouTube chat? Okay. So I see a question that speaks to students with disabilities or a behavior disorder. Will their score count? Um, Katika, I'm gonna let you speak to that. Um, how it might, how these scores might impact a child with a disability. Okay. So, um, and again, for the for a student with a disability, I'll start first with BASC. Um, the scores will not count in terms of determining if a child has a disability. There is a similar product that's called simply the BASC-3, which is used as an adaptive measure to determine if a child, to help us determine if, in fact, a child has a disability. It's something that our school psychologists use. This is not the same assessment. The BASC-3 BESS is not the same assessment. So it is not used in the same way um, in determining if the, if the child has a disability of any sort. Um, in addition to what Selena just said in terms of the MAP and um, as well as the BAS, students with disabilities will take both assessments and those scores will be used simply for the, uh, the functions in which they were designed. They're used as those assessments to really give us a sense of where students are and how they're performing, but they will not be counted towards grades or anything of that nature. So again, it is a similar, similar um, assessment to something you may have heard of if you're a parent of a student with a disability, which is called the BAS-3, but it is not the same assessment. It is simply just a screener looking at behavioral and emotional health. And again, it's not counting towards a grade or anything of that nature. Do we see other questions in the YouTube chat? So I see a parent asks, thanks for, says, thanks for the information. Can I track this information anywhere? Um, so we said earlier for both of our screeners, for MAP and for the BAS-3, we will send home the parent reports to you the beginning of the year, middle of the year, end of the year for MAP, and then we'll send it home twice, correct, Katika, for the BASC-3. So you will get those reports so that you can keep up with how your child's performing all throughout the year. Every time we take an assessment, we'll send those reports home to you. Katika, there is a question that says, what if a child is already diagnosed with anxiety and depression? Is this a disability? So if a child is already diagnosed with anxiety or depression, it's not necessarily a disability from an educational standpoint. Now, it may mean that that child needs to receive some additional supports or be evaluated for a disability under the educational perspective. Um, I would encourage that if that child, if your child has um, anxiety or 
um, or depression that you speak with the either the school counselor or the um, special education lead teacher in your school so that we can work together to evaluate if your child needs additional supports or to see if they have an educational disability so that we can get them either an IEP or a 504 plan for some accommodations. Okay. All right, we'll give you another, okay, maybe one more minute to get your questions in the chat if you have any. About anything we've talked about tonight, the universal screeners, NWEA map, the BASC-3, about our intervention block, or about securely. All right, if there are none, parents, we do ask that you give us some feedback about our session tonight. You can use your phone, uh, the camera app to scan the QR code. It should take you to a quick five question survey where we are asking you about feedback from tonight. And the last question asks you for any additional questions or support you may need. So please feel free to add your um, comments there. Um, and also let us know if you have any additional questions that we can answer um, based on what you've heard tonight. You, you may need to use, this is which email do I use to log on? My personal, you can use your personal email to log on. It should not request an email. But if it does, please use your personal email. And parents, once you have completed that survey for us, we are done for tonight. We thank you so much for taking the time to learn about the academics uh, platforms and programs that we are using throughout this school year. And as again, as again, we would like to say, this is our first engagement with you. We have some initial sessions that will come in the winter and then in the spring. So look for more information about those. We will also post this recording for this session on our APS YouTube page. So you see our Twitter handle here, on the screen and you also see our YouTube channel where how you can subscribe. So again, thank you for joining us tonight. We appreciate your, your time. Thank you and we hope you have a great evening.